Hi, everybody. Hi. Ta-da. <laughs> I'm going on the reflection. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to another series of blooms for you. This is Cousin It. And Cousin It is not in bloom, but Cousin It has decided to take the place of Hibiki because I don't want him to throw a strop. Hibiki is still doing fine. We'll have a quick look at him. Uh, after all this is said and done, first I need to get to the subscribers. But I wanted to say hello and show you something that has never happened before. And that is why Cousin It is featuring today as a welcome. Because I think all this camera activity has really gotten to his disheveled head because I have one bloom. <laughs> He did that in the season as well. Oh gosh, can, you, can I just move your hair aside? Thank you very much, good grief. Look at that, one bloom, definitely out of season, has nothing to do with the right timing. There's so much more to come, but I had a scattered bloom earlier in the season as well. And I think that these cameos on film he is now starting to think, okay, I'm going to have to do something in order to get on camera more. So what I'm going to do is humor him and say, thank you, Cousin It, very much. I get the point. Here we are. And to all my subscribers and everybody that's viewing this video, I dedicate my one bloom from Maxillaria variabilis to you. As an exception, not having something that is massively in bloom other than Hibiki, I decided to, uh, yeah, take the hint and indulge Cousin It and say hi through the reflection. <laughs> so let's get on with it. Thank you for being here. I have some things in bloom I would like to show you and to pass on to my subscribers and those that have commented. For everybody that is interested, this is Vanda Falcata. Clearly not in bloom. And Vanda Christensoniana Vietnamica. Christensoniana Vietnamica, Vanda Vietnamica. I have them both on the label. Clearly not in bloom and has never bloomed for me. So why are they here? Because let me show you the baby parents, baby and Skylar. When I saw this one open, I had no idea about you painting, but I had this one allocated to you because of the elegance of how you present your videos on your channel. There is such a peaceful elegance about them and such purity. And these blooms reflect that in my opinion. Now I am trying to hold the camera really still I am on a selfie stick here. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but I can't get close enough without blurring everything on the tripod. But look at these blooms. I already gave a sneak preview of the blooms in another video, but here they are in more detail. Skylar, these are for you. It's the first time this one has bloomed for me. And why am I so fascinated by the back of these blooms? Well, it's that pink paint brush, little flare on the back. Just for me, it's, it's so cute, so elegant. And they do have a fragrance, very, very light. For a first time bloomer, I'm pleased to be able to say that there is a fragrance and it's kind of a yeah, jasmine kind of fragrance, but it's super light and only at a certain time of day that I can capture and actually appreciate the fragrance as such. So Skylar, I want to say thank you very, very much and use my Chrisnetia green light to say thank you to you for your sweet, sweet support, your kind comments. You're always very encouraging and I really appreciate that. I'm so happy to have met you on this platform. So happy to see you posting videos and I will, as always, link your channel down below. There's such a grace and elegance 
Your paintings are fascinating to me. You use colors that I absolutely appreciate. My favorite colors in one painting. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So thank you, Skylar, very, very much. So from Spain and my Crescnetia green light, thank you so much. And I'm sorry if I get the language wrong when I say thank you now. I do not know what language you speak. If I say Chinese, it might be Mandarin. I have no idea. So please forgive me if the thank you is in the wrong language, but know that I mean it and I appreciate it. This is starting to get gorgeously ridiculous and a little bit precarious, <laughs> but I don't know how else to <laughs> present this bloom. <laughs> Andrea Coco. <laughs> This is the sixth bloom on my second spike of my Sologeny Lime Bay. And it's getting a little bit, yeah, you can see what I've got going on here. <laughs> Not a problem when it's just hanging from the top shelf at eye level, all perfect. But when you want to film it, yes, that is when the challenges start. So I hope that you can see what I'm trying to do here. And uh, yeah, um, Andrea, I, I have to say that your comment on my video about quitting the orchid hobby, it had me smiling because I, I am the same, or let's say was the same. Anything that came into the house was immediately dealt with, no ifs or buts. And I paid my price and stalled orchids for a considerable amount of time. And since January this year, I didn't do that with my uh, Catlia guatemalensis. I left her, I left her be and waited for the right signs and then repotted her. And since then I have been converted to wait it out and be patient about it, even though I have to deal with a different kind of media, etc. But yeah, you had me smiling because I was like, yep, that's me. Exactly what you wrote. That's me. <laughs> so thank you very much for that comment, Andrea. I really appreciate it. The purpose of this video as well is to say another thank you as well for your support and for being here on my channel, for watching my videos and showing up in the comments section every once in a while. I really appreciate it. And Lime Bay is just a giver. I know that last time I said, I'm not sure we're gonna get another bloom because I can see how small and weak the bud is getting. And here we are again. Bloom number six turns out to be big and substantial and has the colors to suit the name, has the fragrance of a very dusty room that you just need to open the window and let some air in. It's not unpleasant, but it's not something I go to and approach every day and go, mm, yeah, you smell nice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm jiggling. I'm on a selfie stick. I do not know how to take care of the filming of this bloom in another way. But um, yeah, so I'm just gonna say it again. Bloom number seven or bud number seven is looking quite small. It doesn't look like it has much substance in it. So I'm wondering how long we're gonna keep this going. <laughs> Famous last words. I've said that the last two times, but as long as I have this one, Andrea, this one is for you. It's a gorgeous bloom and that lime. At least I've got my little Tetris set up here working so that we can appreciate the lime color on the petal and sepal. Very, very pretty. Lasts me about two weeks of bloom. And then she looks pretty fresh, but then the next day she just bloop. One day she's just on the floor. So while I have her, Andrea Coco, thank you very much. She blooms for you. And because it worked the first time around, let's do it again. <laughs> up and up and up we go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Dun, 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 dun. TJ's Pet and Plant World. 
I have a bulb of filament bloom with one, two, three, four, five, six blooms. And what a beautiful, beautiful bloom. So let me tell you about this orchid. You see up there she is. Let me tell you about this one. Imagine, imagine you're buying a present for a baby boy so that you're prepared and you're gonna give this present to the family that is expecting a baby boy because they told you it's gonna be a boy. So you get a present for a little baby boy. And it turns out it was a little baby girl. Oops. <laughs> I bet the parents still really appreciate your present, even though it might have been a different color. And it's the same with my Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry here. I bought her as a Bulbophyllum Medusa. Yes. So TJ, guess what? This is definitely not a Medusa. It's the completely the wrong color. It has the wrong shape, but nevertheless, they got the bulb of film right. So I wanted to honor and say thank you to you for being here on my channel, which I really appreciate. And I just thought actually this is a perfect bloom because it has so many alien intricacies, similar to what I would say reptiles do. Like, you know, a reptile has all these fancy, weird, strange things going on for me. Now for you, you're the expert on the reptiles. You might say, no, that's not weird. That's nature. But that's why I like your channel so much. You open my eyes to a different world and I enjoy your videos very much and I hope that you keep them up. But here, let me just show you the little trick that everybody likes to do with a bulb of film. I can, I should blow against it, but then the mic will sound all funny. You can see how the lip is so jiggly in there. Yeah, that's for the pollinators. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love it. Woo, that's better. There we go. So TJ, I am going to link your channel below just because I think it's always interesting to learn new things about the beautiful creatures this world has to offer and you do a fabulous job in presenting them. But in the meantime, I want you to know that in spite of getting uh, Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry as opposed to the Medusa that I wanted, she is beautiful nonetheless. I wouldn't exactly say she smells nice, but she's not as bad as some other bulbophyllums that are out there. So it's not that big a deal. And she is all yours for the duration of her blooms. She blooms in honor of you, TJ. Como stai? Bonnie Sue Kimball. How is Italy treating you? Hmm? Va bene? <laughs> and I think that's about the only clean part of Italian that I remember, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Bonnie Sue, I have my beautiful Brassavola Digdiana cross with Coilostylus ciliaris in bloom. And this year she's given me three. And for that reason, I'm going to pass these blooms on to you. And as always, with blooms in my collection, they go to a subscriber, a commenter, and these ones I've had your name tagged. They are gorgeous to say the least. I have put the um, camera on a tripod because in this case I can. It's not too much of a act of playing pot Tetris to display these, but I can tell you that they smell like a gorgeous citrus, like a sweet citrus kind of smell. Um, I'm trying to think of lemon sorbet. 
but that's too watery. But if you were to put lemon sorbet with some lemon candy together, yeah, you're just about there on the fragrance of this orchid. And usually at dusk. So she's taking off the traits of the Brassavola digbiana with regards to the fragrance being more nocturnal as opposed to during the day. Now, what is up with this bloom over here? Pray tell. I do not know. <laughs> I don't know. But I can tell you that last year, I only had two blooms. They were a little bit bigger, and she was a first time bloomer last year. So this is how they opened last year. My two blooms were like this, never really flattened out or anything. So there is progress. It's marginally better with these two blooms as to how they present themselves. It's just a beautiful, beautiful orchid. I love the delicacy of these blooms. The Coilus stylus is clear to see, which is one of my summer bloomers that I absolutely adore. The Brassavola digbiana is clear to see based on the chartreuse color here and that super frilly lip. The long extension is from the Coilus stylus ciliaris. This whole bloom is just a reflection of everything that I like in an orchid. And I like green blooms, so I'm hoping that she appeals to you as well. I also really love these pink tinges on the back of the petals and sepals. They stay like that. So these blooms are now open, yeah, over a week. Might, might be nine, ten days now, because I was still waiting for number three to get the act together here and open up but it's not going to happen. And I do want them to be in pristine condition when I film them, at least these two. I mean, it has its certain quirks. I'm not, you know, it's not, for me, it's not unattractive to see a bloom like this. Some people might say that it's distorted. No, for me, it's just a certain, ah, je ne sais quoi. <laughs> no, we're getting really international now. But I love, I just love the way it presents itself, even just to be able to see a little bit of that pink blush there. Bonnie, I hope that everything is well in your part of the world and that whatever challenges that may be are not as stressful. And I just hope that you are safe. Let me say mille grazie again. And I hope to see you in the comment section because the last time we communicated was on the mounts, the ninja mounts. So I hope, really, really hope that you see this video because I've been waiting a long time for these blooms to open and your name has been flashing, you know, like you're going around and around and around on my screen. <laughs> it's your turn, it's your turn. So I really hope you see this video and know that I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you. You see, Hibiki is still doing fabulously. Today I had to remove two blooms. Maybe tomorrow I have to remove two more blooms. Excuse me. Excuse me, just one moment. I'll get to you. And maybe the day after I have to remove another two blooms, but it's still got this Gorgeous, gorgeous color. It just doesn't want to stop. And I'm not complaining. So now, to you, Monsieur, right, from Maxillaria Variabilis and myself, thank you ever so much for watching. Let's go and find that one precious, precious bloom that he has bestowed us with. It is all a little bit suspect to me that he is so camera hungry. I'm glad somebody is. I've got Baloo on the below me. It's like everybody's con congregating here now. And I need to, there we go. There's the color and the focus. Oh, and by the way, mine is not fragrant. In a couple of months, Maxillaria variabilis will be covered in these blooms, which is exciting. Thank you very much, cousin it. I appreciate it. And everybody else as well.
I appreciate you watching. Thank you very, very much. I don't know if you could hear it in my voice, but I'm just going to repeat what I said yesterday. I've got a sore throat. It's getting worse. And any day now, my voice will shut down. If not, it'll be the first time that it hasn't. But if it does, there will be probably just a quick video to say, guys, I'm sorry, can't speak. Have a wonderful day, miss you, and speak to you soon. But I just want to give that heads up. It did not get better from yesterday. And yeah, we shall see how this goes. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. Hand on heart, and if I didn't tap the mic, hand on heart, I appreciate you very, very much. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Bye.